Hello and welcome to Acrylicode. Today we're going to see how Synesthesia and Touch Designer can interact together to create awesome audio reactive visuals. Before we move on, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. We also recently launched our Patreon with different tiers to offer all Touch Designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link to the Patreon in the comments for anyone who is interested. Now back to today's tutorial. The information we need for today can be found on the OCC page of Synesthesia. Here we can find out more about how we can control the input and send the output. We also need the OCC out that information in Touch Designer. In here we are going to use some Python to send some signals. We also need the MIDI out chop to send some MIDI signals to Synesthesia. Before we start, let's go to the audio MIDI setup. Go to Window, Show MIDI Studio. Here we need to double click on the IAC driver. When this window opens, you need to make sure that the device is online and there's at least one bus available. Great, now that our IAC driver is online, we can start. The IAC driver is just a virtual MIDI device that allows us to send MIDI signals from Dutch Designer and these signals will get caught by Synesthesia. Let's start with a very easy example. We're going to go here with a text at first, followed by a MIDI out chop. From here, let's go to the Touch Designer Dialogs window, go to MIDI Device Mapper, and if you don't have a mapping yet, you need to create a new mapping and select Bus 1 as an out device. In Windows, you'd have to do this with a virtual router. Now back to our example, let's put the text that we are active and we go up and then we're going to reference the MIDI out from here. So MIDI out 1. And then dot send note on. And we're going to send it on the first channel and the note is going to be 1. So the first parameter is the MIDI event channel, taking values from 1 to 16, and the second one is the MIDI note value. From here we can right click and go run code or we can press command and R to run the code. Nothing will happen here, but the note was sent. This note needs now to get received from Synesthesia. So let's go to Synesthesia and let's say we're on this scene and we want to change from this scene to the next scene, which only looks black right now because we have no music. Music. And we want to have this change of scenes controlled by the MIDI note we sent from Touch Designer. So to assign the value we sent, we first click on MIDI and then we assign it to the event we want, which in this case we want it to be next. So we click on next and it will get highlighted. So next is now assigned to the note value 1. Now if I go back to Touch Designer and run the code again and come back to Synesthesia, we notice that next is not highlighted anymore, meaning we can keep assigning the note value 1 to another event and then both of these events will get triggered every time we run the code. Or we go and click on MIDI and deselect everything and now the note value 1 is only assigned to next. So let's see if this works. We go back to Touch Designer, run the code again. And back to Synesthesia, we see that next was triggered and now we have the next scene. Now we've assured that the MIDI mapping is working fine. So what I wanted to show you is how to create an easy touch designer interface with which we can control these previous and next buttons and then change between two presets from Synesthesia. Let's do this. First, let's create a container. Let's go inside the container and create a button comp. We're going to have four buttons and I want the container to be 1920 by 1080. So open the parameter window, go to the layout tab and since we'll have four buttons, we'll divide 1920 by 4 as the width and the height will set to 420 so the buttons are square sized. From here, let's go inside the button and we'll set the text as prev for previous. And then let's go to the font tab and we'll increase the font size all the way up so we can clearly see. Great, now we have the first button and we want the MIDI signal to be sent when I click this button. So first we go to the button tab on the parameter window and set the type to momentary. Then we go once again inside the button and after the select we'll attach a chop execute. From here I'll split the screen and set the second screen to textport and dots. Drag and drop the chop execute, open that, and here we only want off to on selected. And I'll go ahead and delete all the rest of the code. In here we only want the value 1 to be sent, so we go up, then project 1, slash MIDI out 1, and then dot send note on, and then channel 1. And we're going to have button 1 send note 1, button 2 send note 2, and so on until button 4. So now in order to have this digit that we want, we go 
parent.digits. Great, now if we scroll out and press a button, we have no visible changes, but the signal is being sent into the system. Now, in order to get the rest of the other buttons, we can just copy-paste a node three times, and the good thing here is we don't need to update the code to send different signals, since we have the parent, the digits, doing all the work for us. But we still need to change the names, so let's zoom into the second button, and in the parameter window, we'll call it next instead of prep. Let's repeat for the third button and we'll rename it to 1 for preset 1 and the last button to 2 for preset 2. Now we go back to the container and in the parameter window we set the new size to 1920 by 480. Then we go to the children tab and we set the line from left to right. And now we have the interface and all that's left for us to do is map it. Let's put it your active and then go to synesthesia, click on MIDI so that synesthesia will be listening for an event. Then select the previous button here, then we go back to touch designer and press the prev button. And we'll repeat the same process. On synesthesia we, we click on next and back to touch designer we click the next button. On Synesthesia we click the default preset and we assign it to button 1 on Touch Designer. Then one more time, click on this preset on Synesthesia and assign it to button 2 on Touch Designer. Great, now we've assigned everything we needed and now we can deselect the MIDI and I'll put some music and we can see if it actually works. I'll close this second screen for a moment and put both softwares visible. Now let's try the prev and the next buttons, which are working fine as we can see. But we don't have any other presets yet except for the default one, so we cannot test the rest of the buttons. So I'll just create another preset real quick by changing up a few parameters here. Then I'll go to the presets, create a new preset and call it longer. And in here I will set longer as the second preset. And now we can test the last two buttons and see that they work and can actually switch between the first two presets. Great, so what we saw until now was a basic example. We saw how to send the MIDI signal and lastly, we also saw the small interface. Next, we're going to see how we can control things with OCC in Synesthesia. Let's go ahead and create an OCC out chop and let's say we want the value of this parameter of fly in and out to go back and forth. So let's do this. First, let's add an LFO chop and in the parameter window, we'll set the frequency to 0.2 and the type to Gaussian. Then right click at the out and attach a rename. In the parameter window, we'll set the new name to controls slash and then the name of the control, which is fly in out. From here, we connect the rename to the OCC out one. Nothing will happen at first and this is because first we need to go to the settings in Synesthesia, make sure that the input and the output are turned on and we need to update the network port value in Touch Designer to this input port value. And now everything's working. If we go back to Synesthesia we can see that the value of fly in and out is going back and forth. So now we see that with OCCs, we can actually control the value of any parameter in Synesthesia. Now that we understand this, we can also see how we can receive data from Synesthesia to Touch Designer. Let's press Tab and add an OCC in, and in the parameter window, we'll set the network port value, which is 7000 by default. And if we update this, we have the audio engine from Synesthesia in Touch Designer, as we can see here. 
From here we'll get the base presence and the base hits and multiply them. Let's first attach a select chop and in the channel names we'll select the base presence and the base hits. Then after the select let's use a math and in the parameter window we'll combine the channels by multiplying them. Then we go to the top network here, right click on the connecting line and we'll add the merge operator. And let's say we want to control the size parameter here with the signal that Synesthesia is sending to Touch Designer. We're modifying this signal and then we're sending it back to Synesthesia. So after the math we attach a rename and we'll rename it to controls slash size. And connect the rename to the merge. This is already working. But at this part, the base is very low, so we see no effect. Let's attach a limit before the rename. And in here, we'll set the tag to clamp, the minimum to 0.5 and the maximum to 0.8. I'll change the music here to something more bassy, and now we see the size changes. Now let's see another way how we can change between the scenes with OCCs. So let's say I want to change to this scene here, Hexoplanet. First we go ahead and create a text that followed by an OCC out. We set the port value here to 6000, which is the default input value of Synesthesia. And in the text stat we put a viewer active and we type op and then OCC out 2 dot send OCC and then we're going to send scenes and then we're going to pass an array with only one value which is the name of the scene so exoplanet and now if we execute the code it will change into the new scene so this goes to show that you can set the scene with a string coming from touch designer Now let's see one more operator, which I think is the most interesting one, the siphon spout in. Siphon is for Mac and spout is for Windows. We go to the settings in Synesthesia and under Live Sources we turn on the output. Back to Touch Designer we set the sender name to Synesthesia. This allows us to have the scene in Synesthesia displayed in Touch Designer. I think this is so cool because then we can grab those awesome scenes from Synesthesia and further process them in Touch Designer. For example, I can first attach an edge. Followed by an RGB key to get the black background. Then we attach a cross and connect the siphon spout in to its second input. And then we can move the value of this cross with parameters coming from Synesthesia. So we could actually use any of the channels that we imported here, but just to demonstrate I'll use the same base as before. I'll add a select. Move it up here and attach a null after it. In between these two nodes, we'll attach a rename and call it cross. We we'll put the null viewer active, drag and drop it onto the cross top, and select chop reference. And there we go. We get a ready scene from Synesthesia, process it in Touch Designer and make it audio reactive with signals coming from Synesthesia. Amazing, no? And this was it for the tutorial. I hope you learned something new and got a sense on how these two softwares can communicate with each other and how much power Touch Designer holds with the MIDI and the OCCs to control other softwares. Let me know in the comments how you liked the tutorial and whether you tried this out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!